Hey folks, this is what we're going to create in this tutorial. This uses a procedural texture to create these curves along a surface, which in turn are turned into a mesh with an animated ramp going along the length of that to give this effect. And depending on the texture that goes in, you can get different effects. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Start by adding a cube, add a new network, delete that group input and replace it with an icosphere. For this technique you need a lot of geometry, so I'm going to put that up to 6 and a radius of 2. Then I want to use a texture to delete a lot of these polygons. So delete geometry, keep it in point mode, grab your wave texture and put the factor into the selection. As you can see, it's not really done a lot there. So I can use a color ramp just to change that range. Because black being 0 and white being 1, this accepts a Boolean. So you're going to have mainly black and just a little bit of white. Change the scale on that wave to 1. Distortion of 10. And put down that roughness. So what you're after is fine strips of polygons. So I just want to play with that. Something like that looks good. And now I want to turn this mesh into a series of curves. Mesh to curve. And we'll use that selection just to essentially get the middle part of each of those edges. So if I use Edge Neighbours and it gives you the face count of each neighbour around each face. I'm just going to compare that. So I want to lay down a curve only where there's one neighbour. Change that to integer and equal. Put that on one. And you can see what that's done. It's just gotten rid of a lot of those extraneous curves. If you play around with that, you get some interesting effects. So one is what you want. And you can see it's quite jagged, so I want to smooth this out. But there's no real way of doing that for curves themselves. So I need to turn that into a mesh, a curve to mesh. And use the subdivision surface. Put that on a level of 2. And you see you're getting nice, smooth curves there. Now I need to change this back. So I want to go back to a curve. 
and shift E the curve to mesh except that this time I'm going to use a profile to give it some actual thickness So you want the curved circle, resolution of 4, radius of 0.01. Now I want to give some variation to that thickness. So if you use the set curve radius, which acts as a multiplier to that. And because that is a field, we can essentially run a noise into that. Noise texture and the factor into the radius. Just gonna put the scale down to one And then I want to affect that range just to make everything thicker. Map range. And something like that looks good. I'll actually put that scale up a bit more on two. Now I want to merge together the original ICO so it's got a surface to sit on. So join geometry and run that all the way along. And that's the result you're getting. Just going to change that to the viewport shading. Put some AO onto that so I can see what's going on. And then I'm going to start putting some materials for this. Put the default material. Call cool, that sphere. Just going to make that an orange. Add a second material. Just going to call cool, that curves. Open up the shader editor. So you got the curves selected. And I need to create an attribute for this. So you may have seen me do this in a previous tutorial. You've got to capture the attribute, but it's important to get it at the right point. So you want to get it at the point where you've just subdivided that surface. So it's mesh to curve. Because you're capturing it as a curve, And then you want the spline parameter and the factor into that value. Control H to hide everything else. It's capturing it on the points as a float. Because this gives you a floating point number between 0 and 1, 0 at the start of the spline and 1 at the end. Then you use that to run a color ramp along it. And the attribute go into the group output. And you have to give that a name, factor. You can call that anything you want, as long as you match it up here. So 
factor. And of course it helps to actually apply the materials. So you set material. This is for the sphere. And then you want to apply this right at the very end. And change that to the curves. So you can see what this has done. That factor is 0 to 1. So black to white. And you can see you're getting that gradient along there. So if you now change that to a colour ramp, you can get any colours we want along there. I'm going to make an orange to a pink. And the third one. So I want it to be seamless. I actually want it the same as that. I'm just going to color pick that knot. And I might just make that orange a little bit different. And then lastly, I actually want to animate this material. So I'm going to add one more color ramp. So factor in and make this black. and white and this is going to be at the front end and it's going to go into the emission now that I've got that what I want to do there is change that factor so because it's coming at 0 to 1 if I add values to that it should run those colors along the length of the spline as you can see problem is when it gets to 1 they're all the same color So if I put in a fraction, what that does is always gives you the floating point part past the decimal. So as it goes over 1, it's always going to stick in that 0 to 1 range. And that way you get it cycling along the curves. And instead of doing that manually, I'm just going to do that procedurally. So if you add in value node, type in hash frame, that's giving you the frame number. I'm going to put that on 0 to 59. Put that at 30 frames a second. And if you put that into the add, it doesn't actually do anything. Because you need a fractional number there. That's just adding a whole number. So if we divide this by the number of frames in the loop, in this case it's 60, that means over the range of that loop, 
0 to 59 means by the time you get back to 60 it's the same as on 0. So now you get that looping animation and might just tweak some of these a little bit. Okay, so it's working well. Just as a final touch, if you're in Eevee, you can actually put a bit of glow on that tail. Put the emission strength up to 20. Put the bloom on and the radius down. 20 is probably a little bit too high, maybe just 10. Hide everything you've seen. And it does depend on the length of these splines. You can see some of them go a lot faster than others. That's just a matter of playing with these parameters to get something that you're happy with. As you can see with that higher scale Generally looking quite good. Okay, so that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching.